Hi and welcome guys. Today we're going to do a uh, short video on how to get from Autodesk 3 Studio Max to Fusion 360. So for some cases where you don't really want to do a fully um, parametric model or a fully solid model, I, I believe that the polygon tools uh, is, is quite difficult in, in Fusion 360. It's perfect for the more measured P parts, but, but for like say some sort of polygon design, I think 3 Studio Max is easier. So the first thing that we need to fix in 3 Studio Max is to go to here, uh, customize unit setups, and make sure that we're on millimeters. If you want to do metric, of course, and that one unit is one millimeter in the system settings. So let's just make sure that we have all of that. So now let's start with. Um, maybe creating a box or something, doing it edible mesh, not poly. Uh, I think mesh for this case is easier because we can select everything, remove the smoothing groups, so it makes it easier to, to work with. Um, so let's say that we just want to design, for example, a, um, a box type hanger. So let's just make something quick here. Um, so maybe we we'll want to create some sort of hook that's um, polygon-ish designed, so it has some, some cool patterns on it. So let's say maybe something like this, and maybe we can use the cut, um, create a cut here. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just creating some sort of annoying, difficult shape here. Which, in some case, might be stylish, but I don't, don't know why not a designer. Um, Let's see, something like that. And we can use this as a hook. So, if we imagine that this is um, hanging on the wall here, I kind of want to hang my clothes up on this. So, I can have this on the wall, and it kind of looks a little bit cool. Maybe we just put some of the tools here. Yeah, something like that. That looks cool. So, uh, we can do this in two ways. Um, First of all, I kind of want to check the size of this one. It's 80 millimeters tall, which is you know, okay. I should probably, yeah, let's let's go for 80 millimeters uh, because I I found that in when importing this to Fusion 360, I have some errors with um, scaling, so the scaling doesn't really work as intended. So let's create a copy here. So now we have two models. So this one is still a um, editable mesh. This one uh, we want to convert to uh, first the editable patch. So it kind of patches all the edges. And after that we actually want to do it to, to convert into nerves. Um, so you get a lot of extra uh, triangles here, but let's just ignore those. So with the first one here, the editable mesh one, we can export that as a um, STL, so hook STL. Only selected, selected only, that's important, otherwise we get that one as well. So then we select the other one, exports, and this time as an IGES file. And here we go. And hook IGES. Again, export selected objects only. There we go. Now we can step into Fusion 360. And we'll have another folder here, and all we have to do here is, is to import those files. So hook STL and hook IGES. Import those two, upload. So far, so good. So one of the reasons why I want to bring in the files into uh, Fusion 360 instead of just having them in, in 3D Studio Max, because as you can see, 3D Studio Max can also export STLs. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is maybe I want to add some, uh, maybe an adapter for a hook 
or maybe I just want to um, uh, to add some sort of tools to um, to do some some um, threads or something like that. So let's see. We have the SDL. So let's start with the SDL. Maybe this could be the the most common uh, thing that you maybe you have a, a Thingiverse file or something like that, and you just wanna uh, bring it in. So sometimes I'm having a little bit of issues with scaling, but in this case it's actually good here. So when I bring in the SDL, that's okay. So this is around eight millimeter um, tall. So that means everything is correct. Now what we wanna do here is to right click on this one. Sorry, to go to create um, again. <laughs> what I mean is to go to modify mesh and mesh to B rep. So it creates a so you can see here converts mesh to B rep surface of solid body type. Meshes with more than ten thousand faces can affect performance. I would say that don't go about ten thousand faces. Um, and we're gonna take that one, create a new body. So now you can see here we both have the previous mesh body, but we also have the new normal body. So this file can now be modified uh, easily if you want to create a hole here, for example. And um, Whatever you might want to do, and you can also, of course, you can sh shinder and fill in these edges. But when you do that, it, <laughs> things kind of get weird. So um, I would be gentle. But the, the idea here is that you can, for example, here on the on the bottom side, maybe you want to create a um, spacer for one of the hooks. So let's see here. Is that the back side? Yeah, is. Um, and the top is down there. So, for example, you can do something like this. So, five millimeter in diameter. Oops, sorry. I wanted to create a sketch. Create a new sketch. So five millimeters. And then maybe. Let's say this line from that line. Okay, sketch circle. Oops. And we kind of want to reuse this sketch and so right now I'm just showing how I would model this kind of kind of model. So that is five millimeters, so you see that's about five as well. And Just give me one second and I'll explain what I'm doing. Extrude this one. Something like that. New body. Take that body, move it down. Like so. Um, 
let's create a um, split body or actually combine that one and cut. So, so now we have a gap here if you want to put a screw into the wall and then you can just hang this on top of that. So uh, that's a kind of typical use case where you want to, well it's <coughs> upside down, but you, you get the idea. So that's one way of doing it, uh, using the STL directly in just mesh body um, converts. In some cases you have, um, you take in a, an open model or an IGS in this case. So this is again from 3 d Studio Max, um, this IGS file here. This is a little bit more different. It consists of uh, a lot of unstitched surfaces. So what you can do with these is that you go to the patch tool, go to modify and stitch them. And you can just make sure that it stitches on the correct spaces and um, create a new body. So again, a new body here, which can be um, um, modified or um, if you want to create some. The, the only issues here is that I don't seem to be able to snap on, on these surfaces. So to do that, usually I, s I create, um, for example, an offset plane. Um, so I kind of create the patch here, and what I want to work with, and, uh, and I can. Um, so um, on this one, I can create the offset plane, which I then can model on. Whatever I want to do. So it treats it as a solid, but it's a little bit limited in, in the tools to work with. Oops. So that are, uh, those are two, two ways of um, taking a model from 3D Studio Max. Uh, because these kinds of polygon tools uh, are like much more than having to work with. Um, Something in uh, Fusion 360, I think these tools are much better as an artist if you want to create um, uh, create different types of, of um, design models. You can just keep on adding, keep on dividing, uh, creating cool surfaces. So uh, that's a quick guide on, on two ways how to, to bring in uh, 3D models from 3D Studio Max into Fusion 360. The best way is to use the uh, STL tools when you're doing these kind of small models. When you're working sometimes with larger models or as reference surfaces from, from a really large STL model, um, these tools can be easier and much easier to use. But STL is, is the preferred one and then as you can see you can create this kind of cool um, Cool sliders and so on too. So I mean, if you're 3D printing this, it's quick and easy to um, to just export to a 3D printer or something. Of course, you can uh, oops. you can put threads into these parts if you want to do that. It's it's a solid, so you can do whatever you want to with this file. Um, but that's one way of going from 3D Studio Max into Fusion 360. I hope you enjoy this quick tip. Um, we're going to bring on much more tools into Fusion 360 and we have to combine it with um, 3D scanning. Um, for example, um, uh, different types of, of uh, surface models and, and bringing those into Fusion 360 as solids. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if there's anything you want to know or try. Or if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, click like, and see you next time. Bye.